Good morning, Grace St. Paul's. <clears throat> you know, every Sunday, I do not ever have to look at my clock at the exact stroke at 10 a.m. David finishes the prelude. Every Sunday, exactly at 10 o'clock. I mean, not five seconds over one way or the other. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, how was your week? <clears throat> All right. Uh, you know, I, I debated about our Christmas decorations in the church. Obviously, from a liturgical standpoint, those decorations should have been down. But because Epiphany was right in the middle of the week, I thought it was really unfair. We were actually getting cut out of a week of, of Christmas decorations. And then, after what happened on Epiphany, I said, we're definitely leaving the Christmas decorations up. So, uh, so here they are for one more week for us, even though we are technically in the season of Epiphany. So there you go. Uh, that's why they're there, and enjoy. Uh, a few uh, announcements for you. First of all, uh, you need to know where we are pledge-wise. And as uh, you can see very quickly here, uh, we are at $425,000, um, so we are just over $100,000 away from our goal. Uh, <clears throat> your vestry will be meeting on Tuesday, and after that, uh, we will be calling those of you who have not uh, pledged yet. This is a very strange year, obviously, and we have a number of folks uh, who haven't pledged yet. Just counting uh, up uh, the number of folks there and doing some quick math, we are in the, the realm of feasibility of making our budget, uh, but we really need all of you to step up to do that, so we can make it, uh, we can do this, but, uh, but we really need all of you to pledge uh, this year. So uh, if you can help us with that and make that happen, that would be really, really great. Uh, we would love to have a great week on that front and hopefully not have to call you. If you could just send it in uh, uh, online or, or even by mail, such as the mail is right now. Uh, but that would be great. Thank you all very, very, very much. Uh, I'm just so overwhelmed by this parish and what you've been able to do in the midst of this pandemic. Thank you all so, so very, very much. So coming up, uh, <clears throat> annual meeting is January 31st, uh, the last Sunday in March. In March, yeah, I wish. Uh, the last Sunday in January in this parish. So uh, January 31st, that will obviously be a Zoom annual meeting. That should be very fun. We have just jacked up our Zoom service so that all of you can be on board when we have our meeting on January 31st. So that means that January 24th, the week before, is your Sunday to meet our, our candidates running for vestry. Uh, <clears throat> so that will happen at noon on January 24th by Zoom, and then the annual meeting the next week, January 31st. So uh, our vestry slate is going to be finished this week. Uh, <clears throat> your nominating committee has about eight folks that they're, they're paring down right now. So January 24th, uh, January 31st, and we're all set. You will find out about the vestry slate this coming week, and certainly by next Sunday, uh, we will have that for you, and everything will be in place. And, uh, and that's it, church-wise. So that's what we're pre preparing for in the next couple weeks. Welcome to the first Sunday after Epiphany and the baptism of Jesus.
creator God, your spirit swept over the waters of creation. You are sweeping over us now, creating something new. Open, Open to us, us your, your new, new awakening, awakening, a new, a new beginning, beginning, experiencing all possibilities in you. Turn us away from the darkness surrounding us. And, and lead, lead us, us to, to the, the healing, healing light. light. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Spirit of creation and renewal, hover over us this day as hovered over creation on that first day. Enter into our hearts and our lives as you did at the day of our baptism. Descend on us like a dove as you did on Jesus' day of baptism, that we may hear again your words of love and adoption. Speak from the heavens into our minds that we may perceive your words of healing and wisdom. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Christ. Christ. Y así se presentó Juan el Bautista en el desierto. Decía a todos que debían, debían volverse a Dios y ser bautizados para que Dios les perdonara sus pecados. Todos los de la región de Judea y de la ciudad de Jerusalén salían a oírlo. Confesaban sus pecados y Juan los bautizaba en el río Jordán. La ropa de Juan estaba hecha de pelo de camello y se la sujetaba al cuerpo con un cinturón de cuero. Y comía langostas y miel del monte. En su proclamación decía, Después de mí viene uno más poderoso que yo, que ni siquiera merezco agacharme para desatarle la correa de sus sandalias. Yo los he bautizado a ustedes con agua, pero Él los bautizará con el Espíritu Santo. Por aquellos días, Jesús salió de Nazaret, que está en la región de Galilea, y Juan lo bautizó en el Jordán. En el momento de salir del agua, Jesús vio que el cielo se abría y que el Espíritu bajaba sobre él como una paloma. Y se oyó una voz del cielo que decía, Tú eres mi Hijo amado, a quien he elegido. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance, For the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. El Evangelio de Jesucristo. Te alabamos, Cristo. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Amen. That old children's rhyme, apparently originating in the mid-19th century, was a favorite in African-American communities. It was evoked often as a way to offer solace to a people who were constantly being verbally abused. It also happened to be a phrase I was regularly offered as a child. Growing up in a hard scrabble steel mill section of East Baltimore, my siblings and I faced verbal and physical abuse on an ongoing basis. 
I will never forget the time I was out playing in the open alley behind our house when I was six or seven. I was a diminutive kid, and one day I climbed up on top of a post so I could survey the world from above everyone else for a change. As I balanced myself on the thin pole, I reached up to the sky to be as tall as I possibly could, whereupon a teenager from across the alley threw a fist-sized rock with all his might, hitting me squarely in the back of the head, knocking me off the post and landing me face first in the gravel and broken glass in front of me. But as much as that hurt, it was the vicious language hurled at me that took its greatest toll. The welt on my head and the cuts on my body eventually went away, but the names I was called haunt me to this day. That rhyme just may be the most misguided aphorism I have ever heard in my life. It has it exactly backwards. Sticks and stones hurt, sure, but nothing like the power of hate-filled words of invective. Never has this been more obvious to Americans than it is this morning. The sticks and stones that were hurled on the Feast of the Epiphany this past Wednesday did not happen in a vacuum. They also did not occur as a response to another event or because facts pointed to an injustice or because of evidence of some wrongdoing or because anyone was threatened by anything tangible. Everything that happened on Wednesday was purely and simply the result of words. Words that were chosen to hurt. Words that were formulated to inflame and incite. Words with no facts attached to them used to bring about sedition and destruction. Those words did more than break our bones. They broke our hearts. They also threatened the very institution in which this country was formed. This slanderous use of language has, of course, always been with us, as history makes clear. But for the last four years, it has been particularly effective. Words all by themselves, have destroyed countless human beings. They continue to decimate the wild creatures of the world. They have exacerbated a deadly pandemic to new highs every day. They have been used to segregate and oppress people. They have cultivated bigotry and racism. They were used to incite riots before this past week, as in Charlottesville. These words escalated climate change and the extermination of our planet. And this past week, they were used in an attempt to destroy democracy itself. Now, as a person who crafts words for a living... I have often been disparaged for being in such an impotent profession. He's all words and no talk. He's all words and no action. All talk, no show. All booster, no payload. All foam, no beer. Who cares what people say? What's really important is what they do. There are no bad words, we are told. Only bad intentions. But this morning, we know better, don't we? Suddenly, this country is realizing that words really do matter. That words can create and they can destroy. Without any assistance from science or medicine. Without any help from military assault weapons. 
This past week, words all by themselves elected two new senators from Georgia. Life-saving words provided by the Reverend Raphael Warnock, the lead pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church, combined with the life-destroying words of the outgoing president in a phone call a week ago Saturday. And of course, inflamed words of hate and vitriol incited the attack on Congress and the greatest symbol of American democracy itself, the U.S. Capitol. The incredible power of words may have been an epiphany on epiphany for much of this nation. But for those of us who spend our Sundays thinking about the lessons in this sacred text of ours, there is no revelation in this. We know about the power of words because we follow a guy who changed society with his words, his parables and his maxims. The, that potency of words lesson also happens to be right there in the center of today's gospel. Remember that when this story opens, Jesus is not yet the person we have come to know. His life to this point actually was so empty that the gospel writers couldn't find anything to say about it. After our Christmas stories of birth, we have that one story you heard two weeks ago about him in the temple at age 12. Even the evangelists who are desperate to find something to say about Jesus can find no words worth repeating about him. His life has been a whole lot of nothing. Finally, at the ripe age of 30, a far cry from young in first century Mediterranean life, Jesus shows up with the crowd to get baptized by his hippie freak cousin. Now tell me, how many parents in this situation would have had plenty of words for their offspring? Words like, when is this deadbeat son of mine going to get off his duff and do something? But instead, what do we hear God say? You are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Even though he had not done a blessed thing, God uses words that will stick with Jesus for the rest of his short life. Son, God says, I am so proud of you. Now, we have tended in the church to focus on the baptism itself as the thing that kicks Jesus into gear. But the power of baptism is not the water pouring over our heads, but the words chosen to describe what this action symbolizes. At the instant that God tells Jesus he is proud of him, he begins a public ministry that will have such an impact on the world that we are sitting here 2,000 years later still learning from it. That is the power of words. That is why words matter so much. This morning, God shows us not just how God's words change us, but how we can change others through our words. The implications of this are profound. We can make or break a human being by the words we choose to utter to them. We can make or break a society with the words we choose. God reveals to us this morning how we can create life with the words we choose to offer them. This past Wednesday, you heard someone use words to destroy life. No beloved, no pleased, no words of endearment. Instead, he called his political opponents bad people and the enemy of the people. Then he told the crowd that his ally should stop, quote, fighting like a boxer with his hands tied behind his back. We're going to have to fight 
much harder. Now, of course, anyone who has listened to this man over the last four years realizes that there was absolutely nothing new in the words he used Wednesday. How anyone could have been shocked by what happened completely baffles me. He has consistently disparaged everyone, friends, enemies, people he knows well, people he never met. His words are virtually always soul-killing, the kind of words that would take the stuffing out of anyone. And then we wonder why no one in that administration could ever function. But here's the deal. This is not just about one man. The words of one human being can be very debilitating to others, for sure. But even the words of the grandest poopa on the planet can only go so far. Unless others grab on to the offensive rhetoric and repeat it as if it is true, the words of the blowhard can never take hold. What gives words their ultimate power is when others are afraid to challenge the toxicity of the despot. An even worse scenario is when others actually support the vile rhetoric. What allowed the attack on the Capitol to happen was the fact that 145 congressional leaders continued to validate the venomous lies of the president. What allowed us to get here is that some news networks and internet outlets continue to spout the same words as if they were accurate. What brought us to our knees this past week was that social media continued to allow him to post his seditious crap for four insane years, turning him off only when his acolytes were breaking through Capitol windows. Any seventh grade civic student can tell you that First Amendment rights do not include being able to yell fire in a crowded theater. How is it that the owners of social media sites cannot equate this simple rule to their own business? And what about the rest of us? Where in the world have all the religious leaders of this country been whose faith traditions speak directly to the evil of racist rhetoric, the demonization of God's children, and the sin of deception and dishonesty? In addition to our faith, History clearly shows us what happens when we do not use our words to counteract the acidic words of others. And I'm not just talking about the Hitlers of the world. The only way, for example, that Joseph McCarthy was finally stopped from ruining so many people's lives was when reporters like Edward R. Murrow stood up and rebuked McCarthy's words, revealed them for what they were, unsubstantiated lies for political power. The only way the segregation of the 1960s came to an end was because the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. used his words to stand up against the racist rhetoric. Today's gospel makes it emphatically clear how we are to invalidate the words of oppressors by using our own words. We have lived with the bigoted, racist, mean-spirited, incendiary acts of the last four years because we did not speak truth to power, because we let his words stand, because people were afraid for various reasons to not do so. It all came crashing down on Epiphany because finally, finally, people said enough is enough. It took an attack on the Capitol itself, but finally, others began using their own words to put down this insurrection. 
they finally said they would no longer stand for the abuse and the lies. After four years of placating, the Senate majority, majority leader finally forcefully rejected the bogus words of the commander-in-chief. Republican Senator Kelly Loeffler, who had just finished losing her bid to remain in the Senate, had the courage to finally move away from the president's lies. The events that transpired have forced me to reconsider, and I cannot now, in good conscience, object to the certification of these electors, Loeffler said. Republican Senator Ben Sass finally labeled the president's words for what they are. Lies have consequences, he said. This violence was the inevitable and ugly outcome of the president's addiction to constantly stoking division. Senator Cory Booker said the same thing in his words. We brought this hell upon ourselves. But it was Senator Mitt Romney who was actually applauded on the Senate floor. That does not happen, folks. We gather due to a selfish man's injured pride and the outrage of supporters who he has deliberately misinformed for the past two months and stirred to action this very morning. What happened here today was an insurrection incited by the President of the United States. While that was happening, well after the horse was out of the barn, Twitter finally cut the president off from making any more of his inflammatory statements. Thank God that they have now made that permanent. I don't know how permanent suspension works, but it's supposed to be permanent now. And Facebook eventually followed suit. When Congress said, enough is enough, when social media turned off the words, it was finally over. The hateful rhetoric no longer had a wall in which to stick. Why, beloved, why? Why did it take an insurrection for people to hear what we have been saying for the last four years? Where were the Edward R. Murrows? Where were the Martin Luther King Juniors? Why did I feel like the Lone Ranger up here each week while the huge majority of my colleagues were scared out of their wits to point out to the world that we had a maniac running this country who would destroy anything and anyone to stay in power? How did we allow him to kill thousands of people during this pandemic with his words of illogic and stupidity without using our own words to stop him? Beloved, you just saw it on Wednesday and you just heard it again in today's gospel. Words matter. And our words have the power to stop tyrants in their tracks. This morning, let us be grateful that it finally happened. Let us be filled with gladness that this country woke up and saw the truth. Let us give thanks that at least some of those leaders who allowed this to happen used their own words to shut it down. Let us be thankful that one of those religious leaders who used his own words to shut down the tyrant is now a senator-elect from Georgia. Let us rejoice that because of those who have had the courage to use their own words, congressional leaders have finally come together in a spirit of care for each other and this country. But more than celebration, we need to learn from this event so that we never let it happen again. Let's return to the gospel to complete that lesson. Just as the events of Wednesday did not occur in a vacuum, so too the baptism of Jesus. 
Remember that there are thousands of people gathered at the river that day to get baptized too. Jesus is just one of them. This story is not about a one-on-one conversation between Jesus and God while everyone else there just hangs around. God is not just speaking to Jesus. He is speaking to all of those gathered at the river. God's words, the words that matter, are what God says to all of the people there for baptism that day, as well as all of us here today. That is how God uses God's words. You, each of you, are God's children. And God is so proud of you. God uses God's words today to honor all of us, to help each and every one of us realize that we are special. Our calling, therefore, is to spread that message to all. And how do we do that? With our words. Whenever anyone's dignity is being taken away by others, we are called to use our words to lift them back up. We are called to have the courage to speak up when anyone else's words threaten the honor of any of God's children, whether they be human or any part of God's creation. We are called to use our words to bring full life to all. I know, the problems of our world seem impossibly complicated, hopelessly insurmountable. But here is what the gospel and the events of Wednesday teach us. We have the power. We have the power to topple the tyrants from their thrones because we have words. Your words bring healing. Your words bring hope. Your words bring happiness. Your words bring camaraderie. Your words bring us together in love. Your words allow us to honor one another in our differences. Your words can save a planet. Your words can save a democracy. Speak your words, beloved, and save the world. Now let us speak our own words and renew our own baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I I do. Do Do you believe in God the Creator? I believe believe in in God God Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe believe in in Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, His His only only Son. Son. He He was was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Creator. He is always present with us and all creation, now and forever. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread when we ever get to do that again, and in the prayers? I will, will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to God? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect and restore the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of Jesus, who has given us a new birth by water and the Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray for the world and all that is in it, giving thanks for God's abundance. God of light, who dispels the darkness from the earth, Accept the gifts we bring and help us receive the gifts of your spirit. For kings, rulers, leaders, and all who are in positions of authority, we ask for your gift of justice and a hunger for righteousness so that peace will reign in human hearts and in the world. We pray for a peaceful and promising transition of leadership in the U.S. next week. God of light. We We thank thank you for the gift gift of peace peace that that makes makes us us strive for justice. For the church and all who call upon your name, we ask for the gift of clear vision so that we can see and follow in your footsteps. We especially pray for all of the world's churches, synagogues, and mosques that we may continue to find creative ways to reach out to those suffering throughout the world. Incarnate God, thank thank you you for for the the gift gift of incarnation incarnation that shows shows the church church how how to to be be real. For nature and all of your creation, we ask for the gift of grace and wisdom so that we know our place in your creation and respect its beauty, variety, and power. This week we give thanks that the stimulus bill includes the phasing out in refrigerators and air conditioners of HFCs, the super greenhouse gas. Creator God, we we thank thank you you for for the the privilege privilege of of being being human. human. For those who suffer and for those who are in need, we ask for the gifts of compassion and redemption so that we can be channels of healing. We especially pray for those who are in harm's way in ethnic and religious violence that continues to plague this world, for those who are ill or suffering on our prayer list, and for those we now name. This week we pray that the pace of vaccinations will increase across the world. Redeemer God and friend of sinners, we We thank thank you you for for the the gifts of healing, healing, forgiveness, forgiveness, and and redemption. God of resurrection, we ask for your gifts of patience, comfort, and courage to all those who grieve. We thank you for the gift of eternal life for those who have died, including Jeff Harvey, Diane Gunderson, Laura Lundy, and all those killed on January 8th in Tucson. God of eternity, we we thank thank you you for for the the gift gift of saints saints and life life that does does not end. end. For those we love and for all the earth, we ask for your gift of blessings. 
Help us to remember that suffering and hardships can also be blessings. God of epiphanies, we, we thank, thank you for the, the gift of journeys, journeys for, for stars, stars to follow, and, and for angels who accompany us along the way. Empowering God, when the road ahead looms endless, empower us to be companions for one another, for one another along, along the, road. the road. Inspiring God, when the road forward is blocked, inspire, inspire us in creative responses, responses that move, move us beyond, beyond the, barriers. the barriers. Enabling God, when the road before us divides, enable, enable us to hear your, your voice from beyond, from beyond the, divide. the divide. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God, our neighbor, and God's creation. We remember, we remember and, and confess, confess that we have become, become alienated from earth. We have polluted God's earth's waters and killed millions of species in the ocean. We have turned our greed into global chaos. We have taken the substance of your creation, the link to all life, and dishonored it. We are sorry. Teach, Teach us to sense the presence of God in all, in all the living waters. waters. Amen. May the peace of the Holy One be with all of you this day. Your sins are forgiven in the name of God, creator, liberator, and sustainer. And Amen. also with you. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. The voice of the Eternal One is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Eternal One over mighty waters. When Christ's appearing was made known, King Herod trembled for his throne. But he who offers heavenly birth seeks not the kingdoms of this earth. The eastern sages saw from far and followed on his guiding star to light their way by light they trod and by their gifts confess their God. <coughs> Within the Jordan's sacred flood, a heavenly lamb in meekness stood, that he of whom no sin was known might cleanse his people from their own. And oh, what miracle divine When water reddened into wine He spoke the word and forth it flowed In streams that nature ne'er bestowed For this his glad epiphany, all glory unto Jesus be, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Ghost
holding in our memories both the acts that Jesus taught us and our commemorations of those communal acts, we gather here in spirit around the table, praying together. Holy, Holy One, one. We, we know that, that you are as truly present, present in our reaching out to one, one another as in the sacrament of the table. We, we love you at the heart of all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot gather together to receive you in that sacrament, come and abide in our hearts. Knowing that you have already come, we embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never let us fear that we are separated from you, from one another, from your creation, every single grain of sand of it. Christ is in the midst of us. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God, whose spirit moved over the deep at its creation, and whose Son, Jesus, entered the waters of baptism and hallowed them forever. We thank you for the gift of water, the waters on the surface of the earth, the waters beneath the ground, the water in our atmosphere, and the water in our bodies. And for all that dwell in the waters, make us mindful of the care of all the planet's waters, that they may richly sustain life for us and for those who will come after us. Through Jesus the Christ, the source of living water. Amen. May the blessing of the triune God be yours. May the Spirit bless you with hope, poured out like water and flowing as the river. May Christ bless you with discomfort at injustice and oppression. May the Creator who holds the earth as an artist holds broth, brush and palette fill your imagination so that you always find the world inspiring and wonderful. May God whose beauty shines on you journey with you. God says to you, you are my beloved. Be blessed this day and always. Amen. Amen.
happy day. He taught me all to watch and fight and pray. Happy day, beloved. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of God with us. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.